Well, good afternoon. Or maybe it's evening, maybe it's morning where you're at. Currently, it is the middle of the afternoon. It's about 3 o'clock in the afternoon here in DeLand, Florida. And I'm squinting like nobody's business because my glasses, well, they're right here on this Stucky shirt. I didn't come here to show you my Stucky shirt. Came here because this place reminds me of a bygone era when my grandfather used to do what they do here. For a time he did. I think more for money than, uh, or maybe it was entertainment. Anyway, we're at the Reptile Discovery Center here in DeLand, Florida. And this is a uh, Serpitarium. There's also a natural trail, or nature rather, or maybe natural. And uh, what they do is live venom extractions right inside here. Now, I believe the man's name is Carl. He's going to be doing the extraction. And you have uh, Ann, Lizard Camp. Lizard Cam. Ann is the lady right in here. So you come on in, take a look around. There's lots of this and lots of that. This is Ann right here. You can see her at the counter. And uh, I'll give you some pricing a little bit later in the vlog. You don't want to see that from that angle. I see those from my kayak, but not from that angle. Let's take a walk back here and see what Carl's got going on. Now the program is already going. So we'll take a look at a lot of this stuff. I'm gonna pause from time to time as well. But since Carl's already got it going on back there, we're gonna just be quiet, walk back, and take a look. Now, if you're not in the snakes, this might creep you out a bit. Florida King Snake. Maybe this is more your speed. Radiated tortoise. And here's a Florida water snake. I've seen these out on the kayak. Got the kids holding all kinds of critters. What do we have in here? Not familiar with that one. If you know what snake that is, go ahead and comment in the uh, below there in the comment section. One of the other cool critters I found in here is a panther chameleon. These things are really cool. You've seen them on commercials and uh, a lot of animal specials and stuff like that. Let's check them out right here. Buenos dias, my friends. Thank you. And I hope you're enjoying the Amos Avengers vlog. You're on new to the tubes. Don't forget, check his other channels, the uh, MS Adventures on One Word, on Facebook, and the Instagrams. Stop looking at me with your crooked eye. Thank you. Talking gecko. Hopefully, I can get a lot of this stuff on video. If not, I'm going to do a part two if this thing starts to cut off. Whoa! I want nothing to do with that. Whew. That right there, Gaboon Viper from Africa. See the size of that head? All kind of pain. 
No bueno. Let's check this out right here. This is the famous Black Mamba. That's Africa's largest venomous snake. Good thing they like small mammals and other critters, small birds, and not aimless adventurers, although they will whack a human. Here's a green mamba. And down here, we've got a Cape Cobra. Ooh, looks like the show's gonna start. Let's check it out. Come on, help you off. I'll help you off. Come on. That critter is the alligator snapping turtle. See that little bait on its tongue? We've seen those out in the kayak from time to time. In here, I believe that's a skink. Hungry? Bueller? Anyone? A good thing since drop or drop. The coral's venom is perhaps the most toxic of any snake in North America. Uh. The coral is also a spectacularly beautiful snake. Its brilliant red, yellow, and black banding pattern is easily recognizable, and the well-known rhyme, red to yellow, kill a fellow, is a quick guide to tell if it's a coral. I thought you'd have better come right now. Watch as the coral bites. You will see just a drop of straw-colored venom. This tiny amount is in fact a lethal dose. Just four or five milligrams is probably enough to kill an adult. <laughs> the coral snake is closely related to the cobras, mambas, and sea snakes. A member of the elaborate family, he has a small front fixed fang, and although unable to penetrate sneakers, shoes, or perhaps even thick pants, the coral is a capable biter when he chooses to be, perfectly able to bite a finger, hand, or any other part of the body. Coral snake venom contains powerful neurotoxins capable of disrupting the victim's ability to breathe. Symptoms which include difficulty in swallowing, difficulty in speaking, droopy eyelids, called tosis, and eventually respiratory failure are sometimes delayed, not setting in for hours after a bite. When they do set in, they can be rapid and dramatic. Antivenom is extremely important in treating coral snake bites. The Pfizer Corporation is once again producing a coral snake antivenom. In addition, a Mexican antivenom, as well as several other foreign serums, do seem to be effective in treating bites on the North American coral snakes. Of the southeastern United States. This snake is found throughout the coastal plain from eastern Texas to southeastern North Carolina and is still common in many of these areas. His close relatives, the northern copperhead, broad-banded copperhead, Osage and Transpecos copperheads can be found from West Texas through parts of the Great Plains up the Mississippi River Valley and over a large part of the Appalachian Mountain chain. 
The snakes you see today are all southern copperheads. Copperhead bites, although almost never fatal, still involve swelling, significant pain, Whoa. nausea, and sometimes tissue destruction. Anti-venom yeah, is only used sometimes in copperhead envenomations. The southern copperhead produces a venom long sought after by researchers. This venom contains an important protein called contortrostatin. Contortrostatin inhibits platelet aggregation and cellular adhesion. These properties have taken this protein into a variety of cancer research. Watch as the snake is gently captured and induced to bite. You will see a small amount of venom fall along the interior of the glass. It takes literally thousands of venom extractions to produce appreciable amounts of venom. After the snake is bitten, he will be returned to his clean enclosure, fed, and left alone for 14 days until his next venom extraction cycle. Amazing now. Oh, cool. How what rascal still contains. Large, dangerous, and pugnacious snake. Whoa. This snake and his close relatives range over the coastal plain and up this Mississippi River Valley of the southeastern United States from eastern Texas to the very southeastern corner of Virginia. The Florida cottonmouth is found throughout the state of Florida and on most of its barrier islands. This snake is still extremely common in some areas and often found in the flatwoods around the reptile discovery center. Because of their large size, copious amounts of venom, and disagreeable nature, cottonmouths can, in fact, be very dangerous. Although the snake is almost never fatal, a bite can and does require antivenom and can result in significant tissue destruction and other complications if not treated properly. Cottonmouths can grow up to six feet in length, although three and a half feet is about average for an adult. They make excellent captives, and many of the hundred or so housed at Mentoxin were bred, born, and raised here at the lab. They often live over 20 years in captivity, and they are excellent venom producers. As the snake is captured and approaches the collecting glass, we sometimes move his head past the glass rapidly in an effort to give the snake some visual stimulus and induce a bite. Sometimes, as the snake bites, you can see the venom gland just behind the eye contract. Well, my friends, have you had enough? Would you like some more? 
We're going to bust out the eastern diamond back here in just a minute. While I was out west there in Nevada living there, my son and I used to catch the western diamond back and that nasty little green one, which is very aggressive. Now generally, the eastern diamondback is not a snake that's going to go and look for trouble when uh, you go walking down a trail and whatnot. They'll warn you. Like some of its other counterparts, such as the insane water moccasin. The eastern diamondback rattlesnake is the largest, most dangerous venomous snake in North America. There you go. This snake, oh, one of our favorite Florida natives, wow, I see traffic. is actually found from extreme southeastern North Carolina throughout the coastal plain to extreme southeastern Louisiana, throughout all of peninsula of Florida and many of its barrier islands. Unfortunately, the eastern diamondback has been extirpated in parts of its former range and is in decline in many areas where it was once common. This magnificent reptile is found in a variety of habitats and often coexists with a large number of other species in gopher tortoise burrows. Pine flatwoods and the border areas between upland habitats and low-lying swamp are some of the eastern diamondbacks' favorite. Diamondbacks feed exclusively on warm-blooded prey, with rabbits, rats, and squirrels all being normal parts of an adult's diet. The eastern diamondback is capable of injecting huge amounts of a very toxic venom. A serious bite by the snake to an adult, or even worse, to a child, can rapidly be fatal if not treated promptly and properly with antivenom. The Reptile Discovery Center and the Toxin Venom Laboratories work closely with one or two other institutions providing this venom for the antivenom project in North America. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Stay, stay with me. Diamond snakes are delicate captives. Extreme care is taken in handling these snakes both for safety and to ensure a supply of venom for antiserum. And toxin is always in need of this species, and we work diligently on our captive breeding program, hoping to ensure a stable and productive colony of eastern diamondbacks. Mm -hmm. And an angry one, too. Oh, he is hot. He is mighty quick. Mm -hmm. Oh, bang! Oh, oh my. my. Yeah, he's real angry. He was going to tell him what he said. He said. Oh, oh. man. Snake will display a hood. 
the hope is somewhat larger and more dramatic, scaring away a potential intruder. Although there are many stories about the emblem on the Don't want to get bit. Its real purpose is probably to confuse predators. Cobras are extremely dangerous. They have a very toxic venom and are capable of producing large quantities of it. Did you hear that? The Asiatic and his close relative, the Indian cobra, you just are still responsible for many snake bite deaths each year. <laughs> Ranging over a large part of Southeast Asia, the monocle cobra is still quite common in many areas. Cobras possess a small, fixed front fang. And as the snakes are induced to bite, you can often see these fangs. Cobra venoms often contain powerful postsynaptic neurotoxins capable of disrupting neurotransmission and resulting in paralysis and respiratory arrest. Sometimes, as little as 10 to 20 milligrams of cobra venom is a lethal dose for an adult. As you watch the monocle cobra bite, they are routinely producing over 100 milligrams of venom during a single extraction. Cobra venom is rich in a host of proteins and toxins, which have varied uses in biochemical research. Monocle cobra venom is used not only to make antivenom, but is currently being used in viral research, organ transplant work, neuromuscular chemistry, and the list goes on. Most cobras make long-lived and hardy captives. Many of the cobras you see here were born and raised at the Reptile Discovery Center in the Tossin Venom Laboratories. It is not uncommon for our cobras to live 20 years or more, and they are one of the most important members of our animal line. Anybody else anything? Yeah. I've got a question for you, Carl. If someone was looking to get involved in this, uh, either as a passion, a career, yeah. um, what advice could you give them, uh, our younger viewers that may be watching uh, this blog? I'm going to give you two kind of uh, levels to that. Snakes or venom production? And let me answer them both. Okay. So snakes, which we get tons of young people who would like to make their living working with snakes. Uh, the zoo field, um, all kinds of conservation stuff happening now. You might be working for fish and wildlife, or you might be working for a zoo in a conservation capacity, that kind of thing. That always starts basically with education. So any kind of solid science background, we always tell people biology, zoology, ecology, conservation, um, and even things like chemistry, biochemistry, those kind of things. Any good scientific foundation is a big door opener that way. Um, and then in both fields, we always tell people if you can volunteer at a facility, an institution, ideally where you might want to work, that's even better. Um, that's a great step in because as you might imagine, tons of people express an interest to work with animals. They love animals, I want to work with animals. But if you can volunteer at a place, A, it shows your level of dedication, and B, they get to know you. And so, oh, so-and-so is a good guy and a good worker and easy to be around. And, and I was just, as a point of interest, I was at the Bronx Zoo last October, and I met six of their new keepers, all young people in the reptile department. Uh, many of the old guys had been there 35 years. Four of them had been volunteers at the zoo. And of those four, only two of them had a degree, which was interesting, because usually that's a big ticket in. Venom production is such an oddball occupation, mainly because the market for snake venom is tiny. It's minuscule. So there are six of us in the whole US, about 30 laboratories in the world, and, and half of those laboratories are 
funded by the governments of the countries that they're in. So Brazil pays to have a venom lever for their, for their AMM project, that kind of thing. Um, and because the market is so small, it's very difficult to make it work financially, if that makes sense. So I worked as a pilot for 22 years while I built that business because I, I couldn't afford to live on it. So we kept growing. I didn't rely on St. Venom to pay my bills. We kept growing, growing, growing. And then we added this public part of it and we and opened it to the public then. But after, we had been in the business really almost 20 years at that point before people were buying our venom. So it's fraught with pitfalls. It's hard to make a living. Snake bite can put you out of business. Um, the county that you're in is never particularly thrilled to have you there. There's a million tricky, so it's such an oddball scenario. But I hope that answers that. Sorry, such a long-winded answer. No, excellent. Thank you very much. But I get that question often. Yeah. Thank you. I hope that answers that. Yes, thank you. So guys, don't worry about the chairs. We'll put them up. Thank all of you. I hope you learned a little bit and enjoyed yourselves. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Good job. Thank you, Charles. Well, my friends, uh, don't know if this is going to be all as the memory card fills up, but don't forget, check us out on Emus Adventures, all one word, on Instagram and Facebook. Of course, you can subscribe here and comment below if you have any comments regarding this video. I have a feeling that this vlog will probably uh, interest quite a few people out there. As I mentioned earlier, my grandfather used to do this, so I grew up catching snakes. So this is certainly something that's dear to my heart. And let me give you a little taste here. In the event that the camera cuts off, have a good day and thanks for joining us. Let's take a look here at the Western Diamondback Rattlesnake. As you know, I'm from Nevada and not originally, but there's my friend, the Western Diamondback. And here is the big boy, the Eastern Diamondback. Let's see what else I can show you before we get the pygmy. He's back there. You got a cotton mouth over here, little man? All right. I'm not a fan of the cotton mouth. I, I like him. Well, yeah, I like him inside that cage, but I don't want to have my feet awesome? near him. This is Tell me. Where are we head? Over here. He's taking me on an adventure. This may shut over off. Here. This could be a lot. The toke gecko. It's a what? Toke gecko. Come over here. Toke gecko? Yeah, you gotta see it. Oh, he's hidden back there on that stick. Yeah. Okay. He wants to hide. Well, you can see him right here at the crotch of the tree in that V yeah, right there. What do we have here? These are Oh, African. there's a little gecko right there. They're African crested ones. You got this down, man. You are into the critters. That's very cool. Very cool. Check this out. Komodo dragon skull cap. But wait, there's more. I'll throw in an additional King Cobra dome at no extra charge. And because this vlog is free, there is that Kaboom Viper. That is what we saw earlier, rewind and check it out. Oh, that timber rattler, yeah. They warn you. Here's a nice southern copperhead. You saw that one being milked in there. And a red rat snake. All right, I think we're rolling, pushing the limits of the card memory. Let's take a look here at them. This is a gray banded king snake. And I've never seen this one before. It's called an eyelash viper. That is definitely new to my eyeballs. Lots of stuff everywhere. There's an Indian cobra down there. Pardon me while I adjust my... Check out the green tree python. Indy. 
This, my friends, is a king cobra. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? That baby's a little bit long. Hopefully you can see this without that glow from the camera off the glass there. And of course, down here, this is a reticulated python, albino variety. And there's this dome. So much cool stuff. Blue tongue skink. And this one's venomous. Its nose is sharp. All right, we are running very low. I'm gonna pause it here. Maybe catch up with you out there for a goodbye. See what else we find. One last look at the green mamba because it's just so cool. All right, my friends, if you want to check these guys out here, just go to this here website. 